Now this video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, before we go into actually writing the code, I want to have a little explanation. So this video, we're not going to actually build anything. We're going to talk about a couple different options that are before us because you're going to run into times where one is a better option than another. And because this is a course designed to give you a really comprehensive view of everything you can do with Rails, I want to uh, talk about both sides in detail. So uh, this video is all about scaffolding versus manually writing your code. And if that doesn't make any sense, that's perfectly fine. Uh, scaffolding is something where all your code is pretty much auto-generated and manual writing uh, is self-explanatory. It's where you write everything from scratch. So when you're developing a Rails application, you're given a pretty wide range of options for building the app. And it's especially true for automated code creation. And so Rails has these generators that let you tag and place different attributes and build certain functionality, sometimes completely automated. And we're gonna go into, the very first one we're gonna do is gonna be on an automated basis. So you can see the way that works. And then later on in the course, we're gonna do a manual one so you know how to do it from scratch and also so you can see what happens when a generator runs. So using a scaffold to generate the entire module with this process, it involves the app assuming that you want the features to have the full CRUD functionality. And if you've never heard the CRUD acronym, it stands for Create, Update, and Delete, which are the core building blocks of many database-driven applications. And as helpful as the scaffold process is, more experienced developers will many times choose to uh, to not use them because it creates a lot of unnecessary code and I'll show you how it can happen and uh, some of the things to watch out for because the more advanced you get as a Rails developer you really want to stay away from having any wasted code and so a good example would be the scaffold gives you the ability to see all the items in the model that you create to edit it to create new ones to delete them there may be a time where all you want to do is have the ability to create. You don't care about editing or deleting, you just want to uh, create instances. And so if you use a scaffold, you would be really putting a ton of code in there that you don't want. And later on down the road, say you come back to the application in a year or two years, you're going to think that by if you see all this wasted code, you're not going to know it's wasted. You're not going to realize that you only wanted one of those modules there, one of those methods there. Uh, at least if it were me, I'd see it and think, oh, I must have wanted all of this functionality because in the back of my mind, I think I'm a lot better coder than I actually am or a lot more detail oriented, I should say. So that's the reason why sometimes you want to stay away from using those uh, exclusively. Uh, you also have the ability, there's kind of like this middle ground, and it's what I will usually use. And those are called using generators. So using generators for the model and controller, these can be really, really helpful because they allow you to efficiently perform tasks such as creating database tables along with the associated model files and then also being able to create custom controllers with all the methods built in. But it lets you have explicit control over everything that's going on. So if you only want a couple different methods built in, the generator will let you uh, control that and you won't have as much or any type of wasted code. The last option is building it from scratch. And if you're new to Rails development, it may seem like many of the generators and automated tasks are magic and they perform tasks that you know, us mere humans could never do but it's really not the case. Everything that the generator does, you can do as well. It's not considered really a common practice to ever do this. Uh, I came from a PHP development background where, and this was PHP without things like Laravel or some of the frameworks that are out there. It was 
true just core PHB and with that I had to build everything manually and so that's when I came to Rails I thought that's the way it was here and then I saw the way the generators worked and I absolutely fell in love with that so it's really rare and it's really considered bad practice to build them all manually all the time and the reason is because the generators will do a lot of the things for you that there's really no reason to do yourself so a generator example a good example would be for a model you wouldn't want to do that yourself because then you're going to have to go and look up and see okay what active record class does this generator inherit from or for your uh, controllers you don't want to go create your controller add all that code in and then go and create all the associated views i've done it a few times uh, and i always seem to end up leaving one or another thing out so it's a lot better practice to use uh, to use the generators with all that being said, I really want to show you how cool the scaffolds are, and so you'll be able to see how much code can be created in, with literally a single command. And so in the next video, we'll go through and we'll create our first scaffold and see all the code that that generates for us.